Hello and welcome! Today I'll show you how to model this chest knight. It's not very complicated and the mesh is fairly simple. Ok, so enjoy! Let's go to the front view, delete the cube and add our first background image. Navigate to real files and choose the front image. Next we do the same thing but in the right view and then the back view. The file explorer is not showing on the video. It's a window that looks like this. Ok, so after adding the three background images, we can now start modeling. Let's begin in the right view. Add a circle. I think 32 vertices is too high poly considering how we are going to model the horse. So I'll leave it at 16. Next I just move the circle down on the Z axis so we can start making the cylindrical shape. And this object is basically a cylinder with a fill-up cut forming the shape. You just need to scale and move them until they fit the reference. For the top, make an extrusion and scale down. Next, using the edge select mode, we can start selecting which edges will be sharp when you use the bevel modifier. Go to the transform panel. Set the mean bevel weight to 1. And to close the bottom part, we could just make a face or you could press Ctrl F and choose Grid Fill. Let's see how it looks like with the bevel modifier. Set the segments to 2, profile to 1 and limit method to 8. This is going to give us easy support loops to use with smooth shading and you can control how sharp it will look by adjusting the width value. I'll add a subdivision modifier to see how the mesh behaves. It's looking pretty good. Using S, Shift Z, I'll scale up a little bit on the sides and remove the subdivision modifier. We won't need it right now. Ok, so the base is now done, so let's move up to the horse, add a plane and rotate it by 90 degrees on the X and then on the Z axis. Now just scale and move it to the bottom of the body. And the goal now is to keep as simple as possible. This means very low poly but with a nice mesh. I'm going to align the plane with her first key shapes present on the image which are those sharp edges. Now we need to create two loop cuts to follow the remaining sharp edges present on the image. Then we'll be able to push them following the front and back image as reference. So I'm taking that edge. I'm going to front view and push it aligning with the reference. Now some minor adjustments. Now I'll take the other edge, this one. And repeat the same process now on the back view. Just be careful not to get confused with both edges. That looks ok. Now I'll add two more loop cuts because this body is still looking like a box. Just push them on the X axis, then adjust it on the front view. Now it has the correct curvature. And it's time to add a mirror modifier. Turn on clipping so the mesh stays snapped with the mirrored one. And let's make two very simple extrusions up like this, just to get started with the rest of the body. And then just move everything around to fix the shape following the reference. Alright, so now it's time to adjust everything on the front and back. When modeling objects like this, it's always good to study what the lighting on the image tells about the surface. You can see details being drawn between dark and bright spots and we use them as guides to position our edge flows. Alright, the body is pretty much done. Now I'm gonna copy this edge to use it on the nose. This will be the starting point to model the head. It follows the same method as we did with the body, just keep it simple like that. And, uh, on the front there is background mesh distracting us, so click on the body and press Ctrl L to select it, then H to hide it. I'm just making the plane fit the image and adding one more extrusion in this area. Now I'll show you a very cool modeling trick. Go to this options menu and enable auto merge, then set the snapping to vertex. Now when moving an extrusion, for example, if you hold Ctrl and point to a vertex, it will snap. And because of the auto merge, we won't need to worry about removing doubles. Ok, so moving on to this area, keeping it simple as we did with the upper part. At the moment we are just building basic shapes, it will get a bit more complex after that. 
Alright, so this is the most important part, because we can't keep modeling the same way we did with the nose. If we do, we end up with a head that looks far from the reference. So let's use a different topology design here. Try watching this before modeling so you can get the idea behind first. Basically I want to make a round edge flow as I get closer to the eyes. And this is going to make all the difference later on when modeling the eye region. Uh, I speed up this part because of the many repetitive steps that I'm making there. I'm moving vertices just like I did with the other parts, but this time I'm focusing on making a curvy edge flow for the eye region. This curvature applies for the front view as well. Ok, now I'll show you another quick trick, which is to extrude single vertices to draw the shape. It's important to keep the same number of vertices on each side, and then you can just press F to close each connection, like this. Now let's pull off our new vertices to adjust them with the front image. It's looking good so far. Finishing the eye area is pretty easy, it just needs two more extrusions at the top. And then select the entire edge loop, extrude and scale down. Then make a face to connect the edge flow. I'll create an additional loop cut on the middle. Then we just arrange the vertices around the eye area. And don't forget to repeat the process on the front view. And it should have something looking like this. Let's move to the top of the head with a few more extrusions. Just keeping everything aligned as usual. Now I want to connect this first edge flow that we created to the top of the head. And to do so, we just extrude and move that edge up, then make a face connecting them. For the remaining quad, just create a face to fill it, and we have a nice edge flow going on with this mesh. Let's close that hole on the eye, make a face, press I to insert, and Alt S to push it inside. Again, you could leave it as a face or use grid fill. I'm going to pull this vertex inside a little bit. Alright, so let's move now to the mouth area. To close this, make an extrusion on the x-axis and then move it to the center. The remaining vertices can be easily snapped like this. Now that we've finished the mouth area, let's continue to the rest of the head. Here we got a small problem, this vertex cannot be that close to the center, so we turn off clipping and move it out like this. Then enable clipping again. That edge will follow our first key shape that we made with the body, that's why it needs the distance. Ok, now it's time to unhide the body with Alt H, and start merging the vertices of the neck with the ones of the body. Everything looking pretty good so far. Next I'll take those two edges and make a few extrusions up. Try to imagine that we are making connections, so we have one, two, three, and four, but this one we snap it to the other side. Now just arrange our new geometry so it follows the shape of the image. The imagined connections are going to become real now, I'll start extruding from here. It's easier to just make a face there, and because of distance between vertices some edges become a bit problematic, but you can fix it by manually snapping it. Let's make another face there, and change our extrusion pattern to finish this edge flow. Just make a face there and close the other one as well. Alright, the mesh is completely done, just need a few adjustments here and there. We need to align our new geometry with the back view. But before doing that, let's first hide the front part of the mesh so we don't get distractions. At first I use box selection with B, then circle selection with C. Let's hide our selection and go to the back view. Just keep everything aligned as usual. 
now unhide the mesh. Now we are left with only two vertices requiring attention. First this one. Go to the front view and just push it a little bit like this. And select the second one. This time go to the back view and move it a little bit on the x-axis. And if you want to, you can keep tweaking the position of vertices, but we are pretty much done here. Uh, to do the ears, we can take this vertex here. Just copy it and make some extrusions like this, just to get that simple shape. Make sure to insert this part quite deep inside the head, so the corners don't show up when we smooth the whole model. I'll make an additional look cut there to get even closer to the shape. Uh, this is what I meant when I said corners showing up, so you might need to push this a little more inside. Next select our new geometry, go to the front view and extrude it until it fits the image. Now select the entire mesh, then deselect all except the bottom face and delete it. Ok, now I'm taking this vertex from the ear, I'll make a copy of it and I'll quickly show you another chip which is to hold CTRL and use the right mouse click to draw more vertices. Pretty cool, huh? Ok, now that the line is finished, press E to extrude and leave it at the same place, then press SHIFT S to push inside. Something like this, then we can manually adjust the entire line. Just remember to take them deep like we did with the ear. Nice, now select our new mesh and let's start moving it on the x-axis. In front view we can see a small bend on the mesh and this is not good. To fix this press S, X and 0, then just move it to the correct position and extrude it. We can now delete the face on the middle and the ones that are inside the horse. The model is now done, we just need to add the eyeball. Uh, select this edge loop, press Shift S and then choose cursor to select it. Add a UV sphere, turn off clipping. Ok, let's set the segments to 12 and rings to 6. Scale down to fit inside the eye area. I rotated the sphere by 90 degrees but it's optional. Then you can adjust the size and position of the eyeball to your preference. I think it's looking very nice. Now let's move to the smooth shading. And yeah, not what I expected. <laughs> This weird result is caused by inverted normals. To solve this, select everything and press Shift N. It's also good to apply the rotation and scale of the object, especially if you are going to play with modifiers. Ok, now we are ready to start selecting the edges that we want to be sharp. Uh, don't worry if you forget one or select wrong, we are going non-destructive, so everything is easy to fix. After finishing this selection, set the mean bevel weight to 1. On the ears, you can simply select it entirely and apply the mean bevel weight. I'll remove the value from this edge. Uh, same process applies for the hair. Now let's see how it looks like with the bevel modifier. To make it work properly, we need to set the modifier to work as support loops and use only our selected edges just like it was done with the base. Now just add a subdivision modifier. We can increase the subdivision level if we want. Oh, and don't forget to use it on the base too. And we just finished the night model. I hope you have enjoyed watching this. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. And as usual, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.